Hi everybody, I'm Dan York along with John Prosh, the owner of PKSA Karate, but also the chairman of the Garden City Downtown Development Authority. We want to talk about some of the great things that the Garden City Downtown Development Authority is doing. And one of the things we want to do is thank you for your continued support of the Garden City Santa Land Parade, which is now entitled the Garden City Downtown Development Authority Santa Land Parade. Thank you very much for that continued support. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, our pleasure. We, we um, you know, being in the downtown and right centralized there, uh, it, it's a great fit for you know, the DDA to sponsor and for, it's great for the event too, right? It keeps it going, so. And it allows the uh, Santa Land Parade Committee of which I am a member to, uh, that's a $7,000 donation that the Garden City Downtown Development Authority makes and uh, we're going to use that at least, at least in this upcoming year to really try to expand the parade, add a lot of marching bands, add a lot, add, add a lot of new entries to the parade and we're hoping that that will really enhance what the parade has become. And it's been since 2009, so that's it's been quite a long partnership. Yeah, I think the uh, Santa Land Parade has benefited from that sponsorship. Oh, it's absolutely. been growing, and uh, the entries are great, and the the, pop, the popularity of it's been growing too. The only thing that, that always knocks that popularity down is the weather, right? <laughs> absolutely. We had an off year this last year yeah. because of all the rain, but... Uh, Still, you know, there were still nearly 100 entries in the parade, and there were thousands of people out there that came out. It stopped raining just in time for the parade, uh, but, it, but thousands of people still came out for the parade, and it was great. Yeah. Well, yeah. Awesome. let's talk about some of the other things that the Garden City Downtown Development Authority does, and let's back up just a tad sure. so people understand what the Downtown Development Authority is, because they hear it, they see DDA, but they don't necessarily know what the function is or how it even came to exist. Yeah, so the Downtown Development Authority was formulated, I believe, in 84. Mm -hmm. And our, our number one uh, project there is to enhance the downtown in any way we can under the guidance of the tax increment financing program. Okay. Which means business taxes, a uh, portion of that goes back to uh, the funding of the DDA to promote the downtown, to enhance its appearance, and to recruit and develop business growth and uh, retention. Sure, and that's important because it's a very competitive market now, especially in Metro Detroit. Oh yeah, yeah, we're uh, we're up against uh, some pretty good competition just with the demographic differences and dynamics with, uh, you know, the cities to the north and the east and west of us. So this helps us, you know, to promote Garden City in the. You know, because we're such a small town, mm -hmm. it helps us to promote in a manner that we try to keep up with those bigger towns that are sure. around us. And and, and uh, everybody is so excited about things that are happening in downtown Detroit, but what sometimes people forget is that some of those businesses are coming from the suburbs. That's exactly and, right. And some of the suburbs, even like Livonia and some of the larger uh, suburbs that have been very successful financially, and commercially are now struggling because a lot of those businesses, the hip thing to do is go downtown and it's, uh, the, we haven't really grown as a region. We've just kind of moved the parts around on the, on the board. I was recently at a conference in downtown Detroit and what they were talking about was how uh, small businesses are starting in the metro and outside Detroit areas and they're building their businesses and then they were able to move into the new re newly redeveloped downtown so yeah it's exactly how you're saying they're coming from the outside and they're moving in uh, but we have to as the outside in the metro as as much as we're supporting downtown detroit we got to work to build what we have right. in the in the metro area too in the metro area too so. now when it comes to tax increment financing authority uh, what that basically means is in 1984 when the DDA was, uh, was established, any increase in tax revenue from that point forward goes into the coffers of the DDA. So that means for a round number, if the city was collecting $100 from a business in 1984 in property tax and it now collects $140, that $40 goes towards the Downtown Development Authority so that you have money to fund your programs, to fund streetscape improvements, to fund facade improvement programs and the like. Right, and we have a very, very strict list of things that we're allowed to do and not do. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, we cannot fund or help fund or sponsor an event that we would like to sponsor if it's outside of the DDA district. Sure. So if there was an event that was hosted in the Garden City Park, we, we cannot fund that legally 
right. uh, by the frame of the, the outline. Right, the way it's designed by the state sure. and, and by the statute. And the Downtown Development Authority is on Ford Road from Henry Ruff to Harrison, right. and on M Middle Belt from, I always get this wrong, from Maplewood to, is it as far as Bach? Yeah. Okay, as far yeah. as Bach. Yeah. So, and the central business district is, is kind of easily defined uh, cosmetically because that's yeah. where the lower profile streetlights are. That's where there's been a lot of streetscape work. And that's a tighter area from, and I, again, I always get this wrong, from Brant to, I'm not even sure, to where it Harrison? goes. Is no, it, no, not Harrison. Um, Central, probably Central, from Brant to Harrison, and then and and and, and only from about uh, Beechwood. Yeah, from about City Hall or from the area where Planet Fitness is, and yep. just a little bit south of Ford Road on Middle Belt. So that's a a smaller area that has even more restrictions on it, a, as applied by uh, how the Central Business District is is def is defined. Yeah, uh, I wonder if everybody noticed uh, the new the re redesigned uh, star spray as we had for the holidays this okay. year. Okay. Uh, for the, uh, we got those for up Christmas. this year. Yeah, for Christmas. And, um, you know, of course, the, the tree lighting and all that looks great down there. Uh, that's all been redesigned over the last few years to uh, really enhance the holidays when you're coming downtown. And we've getting a lot of compliments about it, people driving through. Well, and, and again, if you take that area, if you look at the streetlights, for example, uh, the DDA now has redone the streetlights in the entire uh, area from Harrison to Henry Ruff on Ford Road, yep. and uh, and even outside of the Central Business District, replaced the wooden poles, had the wires buried. It allows you to hang banners from those. It allows you to do different things. They're more decorative. They're more ornamental. Those were painted the the teal green that is kind of the DDA color. Yeah, yeah. And then the Central Business District is where you have all those Christmas decorations where you put the lights in the trees and the sprays that that John is talking about. These were very old uh, pieces of hardware yeah. that were in storage from the DDA that used to be used as Christmas decorations. And for a couple of years, the DDA was paying a company to, to put decorations up, and you were renting the decorations, and it was pretty expensive. Uh, and, and Gary Carter, your, uh, your guy for the DDA that does most of the uh, landscaping and yeah. maintenance, he... This was a, a, real, uh, a real passion for him to restore these things and put new lights on them and repaint them, and, and they looked really, really cool. We saved thousands by doing that and uh, uh, re refurbished some old, old equipment, made mm -hmm. it great, and so we thank Gary Carter for all his time on that. But, uh, yeah, we, we, didn't, we didn't think it made any sense to keep, you know, renting, renting holiday decorations sure. just to... Sure to uh, give them back and we can save all that money and keep them and use them. And we'll be able to use them for other holidays too. We just change out the light color on them. So Well, let's talk good. about, since we're talking about that, let's talk about events first that the DDA is involved in. Because sure. there's a lot of events that the DDA sponsors. Uh, and a big one this year is going to be the Lucky Squirrel, which is a flea market. Yep. Uh, you're expanding that from two weekends or two days to five this year. Yeah, it's been so popular with the local uh, community and then uh, people from surrounding communities coming in for it. You know, basically uh, individuals and businesses can come and set up uh, booths, so to speak, and uh, sell product, offer things, uh, offer um, services, and uh, it's become a huge popular event. So we decided to expand it this year and uh, continue to attract people to the downtown. And it is a very, very popular event and very yeah. well-attended event. Yeah. I think, uh, I think some of uh, the weekends are already full, and we're, we're not even close to the first one yet. Right. So. Snow on the ground still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, people have been calling and making reservations and um, getting set up for it. So okay. some people are doing all five. Some people choose to do a couple. But either way, the events are filled with vendors, and they're also filled with... Uh, participants. Fantastic. Yeah. And your biggest event by far is the Chili Cook-Off and Car Show that uh, has just had its 10th anniversary last year. That comes up in October and again just a wildly popular event. We got the best problem ever with the Chili Cook-Off <laughs> and that's we're running out of space. Okay. So uh, our number of uh, Chili Cook-Off teams has been pretty solid the last few years and holding but the number of uh, people that come and watch this and be part of it and taste the chili and there's um, you know entertainment and then of course the car show attracts mm -hmm. you know uh, quite a number of people so um, 
Yeah, we're, we're very proud of that event. And I can remember when we first started it, as you probably can too, it was, you know, just something we had an idea for and uh, made it happen. And it's just grown to something great. So. Yeah, it is. And, and that's the same day as the uh, fire department open house right. and the police department open house. So it turns into a, a really big deal and it is a really, a really great day. Uh, the tree lighting you mentioned that uh, that happens every year the Monday after Thanksgiving and again a, a nice event uh, probably has outgrown its space but mm -hmm. the Christmas tree itself is in the common so that's where it is and and again a, a, a super turnout for this year's tree lighting. Man was it cold this year. Yeah and still the people showed up. They <laughs> yeah, got out yeah. of there in a hurry yeah. but uh, they yeah. showed up. Yeah, it's a great event. Um, you know, it's a quick, quick and simple event, but I think it helps with the community dynamic for bringing residents into town, or, or into the downtown, and uh, just getting everybody in the holiday spirit and celebrating, celebrating the season. Now, one of the things that the DDA tries to do is economic development, and again, we talked about that. That's a that is a a real battle. But there are certain things that the DDA does to try to position themselves for that economic development, including attending seminars and trade shows and events throughout the country that specialize in trying to attract businesses to your community. I went to the International uh, Shoppers Council recently, and basically what that event is, is it's uh, real estate um, companies, it's uh, business development, it's uh, land management companies, and basically they get together and it's kind of a, a be all of uh, showing what you have to offer and uh, seeing what's out there. So the DDA goes to gain knowledge, see what's going on in the local and surrounding areas in this state and sometimes out of state. Um, but, but our main goal when we attend those events is to try to figure out what we can target as uh, recruitment to bring business into our town. Right. And, and one of the key things, too, is to obviously retain the businesses you have and, oh, and a yeah. collaborative effort between the DDA and the city. The McDonald's that is located just off of Ford Road in Middle Belt will finally break ground this year and end up on Ford Road in Middle Belt. Oh, that's going to be great. Uh, yeah, the McDonald's is one of our uh, mainstays right downtown there, and uh, it's been there for years and uh, we're very excited about them taking over and readjusting their building on that whole corner and making that whole Ford, Ford Minibelt intersection uh, enhanced, you know, because sure. it's pretty run down. It's been there years. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so the city and the downtown development authority and McDonald's have been working on this for quite a while. And the design of this building will be more attuned with what our downtown looks like rather than just a cookie cutter McDonald's. Yeah, the DDA was pretty adamant about making sure that they fell within the guidelines of what we wish to have as far as appearance and facade colors and things of that nature for the business. And uh, McDonald's gave a little pushback, but it, all in the end, uh, it was great. It was a great uh, marriage between the businesses and the, and the city, and uh, it's going to happen. So we're very excited about that. The former Alberts on the Alley property uh, is now in the hands of someone else, and it is being renovated and reworked again through the collaboration between the city and the DDA and the property owner to open that up into basically rental hall space. Yeah, banquet center, rental hall space. Uh, that's a big footprint in the downtown too, so we're excited to have that reoccupied. Yep, and then... Uh, well, the, the biggest footprint in the downtown, the former Kmart building, oh, appears yeah. to be going in the direction of becoming an L.A. fitness. Yeah, that's uh, still in the works, uh, but that'll be great to have that, that, big, that big space <laughs> uh, reoccupied. <laughs> yeah, and then along with that, and then that Planet Fitness went in too. So. Right, where Kroger was. Yep, so that's so. going well. So, so we don't have a grocery store, but we'll be the healthiest city in the state because we'll have two giant workout facilities right across the street from each other. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Another thing that we've done to help retain businesses is we've uh, reinst re uh, re reinstated our facade improvement loan. Um, basically, what the DDA does is we offer up uh, some financing for businesses to uh, take uh, take a small portion of money and uh, redesign the fronts or the facades of their building to upgrade them, uh, change colors, enhance the appearance, uh, you know, to keep the downtown attractive. Sure. And, and we, we do that for a couple of reasons. One is to promote that so businesses will uh, want to do some upgrades. And then two is to try to keep them within the guidelines of the, the color scheme and the Mm -hmm. the visual appearance that we like in the right. area. So we've done that. And then um, 
we, we instated a new one uh, for signage grant. Uh, basically, if a business wants to upgrade their signage, uh, put a new road sign out, new building sign, uh, a portion of that signage can be uh, paid for through a grant from the DDA as well, okay. so we can get some upgraded and new signage as well. And through some creative financing, uh, one of the reasons the DDA was a little hamstrung financially for a little bit was the new streetlight project beyond the, uh, in, in what they call the gateway area. Mm -hmm. uh, Detroit Edison worked with the DDA very closely and, and, and very creatively to allow those to be paid over three different fiscal years, even though that wasn't the, the way the DTE wanted to do it, right. but they wanted to get the job done. And, and the way to do that was to, to make those commitments over three fiscal years. But that meant that the DDA, DDA had a little less money for things like facade sure. improvement programs. But it also is going to save us money over the long course, too, because it's LED lighting now. It's mm -hmm. all upgraded and... Um it, it you know it looks great too so yeah absolutely uh and, and, the, and i don't know if this was part of the uh facade improvement program or not but one of the uh, sets of properties in garden city that has kind of been an eyesore for a long time is the area in the garden plaza i guess we'll call it on ford road west of middle belt west of what used to be uh andrews drugs and, and the landlord there has has redone the fronts of those buildings, and they're very attractive, and they and they do blend in nicely with the rest of the downtown. Yeah, they didn't use any uh, facade improvement loans through the DDA, but we've been in contact and talking with the family there that owns those properties, and basically uh, they've they've worked over the last I don't know six eight months to build uh, you know build up those properties and make them look a lot better than what they have in the yeah, past. Yeah, and make so. them hopefully more rentable. Yeah, absolutely. More rentable. Um, Kim Dold is your director. Right. Teresa Manuel is your uh, assistant to the director. And, and these are the folks that work every day. The folks that are on the, gar uh, the Downtown Development Authority, they are all volunteers. Correct. But uh, Kim Dold and Teresa, they are your their boots on the ground, if you will, your day-to-day -day people that, that run the office and, and run the Downtown Development Authority. They do a great job. Uh, they work very well together as a team, and they work very well with our board, our board of trustees to uh, get get the tasks handled and they're, they're very timely. So we're very thankful for that. And they put in, uh, you know, when we have these like lucky squirrel events, they put in extra hours like most people wouldn't believe. So we're very thankful for them. They do a fantastic job. Okay. And, and again, your board meets monthly? Every third Tuesday okay. of the month. Uh, and With a depending... rotating schedule between mornings and afternoons still? Yeah, that's right. Yep, okay. 8.30 a.m. and 5 p.m. Okay. All right, and folks, obviously those meetings are open to the public. They are, yeah. And DDA.com, GC, I'm sorry, GCDDA.com, GCDDA.com is their website, and uh, yeah. you can find information about them, find information about the things we spoke about here today, and, uh, and see what's upcoming in the Downtown Development Authority. Sounds great. Well, thank you again to you. Thank you to the entire board of the Garden City Downtown Development Authority for your continued support of the Garden City Santa Land Parade, the Downtown Garden City Santa Land Parade or Garden City Downtown Development Authority Santa Land Parade that'll be coming up in November. That's a big deal. And, uh, and we're, again, we're very happy to have you as a partner. Thank you. All right. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Dan York. Good night, everybody.